Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our students who are here as well. Uh, all right. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our session today. Would anyone like to pray? Who would like to pray? Go ahead, Prabhs. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, new week, oh Lord Father. We thank you for this uh, new day that you have added into our lives, oh Lord Father. As we're going to dive in uh, to learn, oh Lord Father God, uh, we ask for your spirit to guide us, oh Lord Father, and uh, help us, oh Lord Father, to understand everything that you are teaching us, oh Lord Father, that you are trusting us with today. Uh, we submit ourselves to you. We submit our hearts and uh, our minds to you, Jesus. Uh, you come and you sow your word in our lives, oh Lord Father, so that it will be a blessing to us and the people around us. We give you glory and honor. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So um, last class we did chapter 19. Oh, in chapter 19, we talked about uh, you know, work and rest. We how do we have work-life balance? Uh, we got to work. We got to rest. We got to balance. What is priority? There's a time where we have to work additional hours, uh, but compensate that by spending time alone, spending time with your family. Uh, you know, very important, is, especially for us, is to understand that spending time with family or your own personal time alone doing things that you like is as important as standing in front of thousand people and preaching the gospel right we may think oh preaching in front of thousand people is the most important thing that's good but family is equally important spending time with your children with your with your brothers spending time with your parents is equally important as ministry right so never put, you know, never make boxes and say, okay, this is the only thing I'll do, or I'll give most of my priority to this, or I'll give you know most of my time to this. Learn to balance it out. Right? And over time, even as we you know mature, even as we grow, we we get married, we have children, we have families, we will learn how to develop this, right? But the mistake that uh, many of us Many of them have come and spoken to me about this. Is that you know they are in full time ministry and they don't even know what what the children are doing. They don't even know what is the gifts of the children. But they haven't even taken the children out, right? And sometimes you know uh, I've spoken to leaders and they say, "Oh, there's so much of ministry, so." You know, summer vacation is the most important times. You know, we do a lot of these events and programs and conferences. So we don't have time to take children. And I personally know of friends, not friends, but people that I know of who are pastor's children who have never gone on a family trip. And they are 20 years old. It must not be so. Right? Uh, you must make time. Right. And, you know, we don't blame the parents because that's the mindset, especially if you look at towns and villages, that's the mindset. They don't believe in going out, spending time in family. Hey, that'll happen on its own. Children, they'll grow on their own. Right. Uh, but we need to come out of that mindset and say, hey, no, I need to invest my time on the children. I must invest my time in my family, right? And and it's very very important. Right? Sometimes, you know, I, uh, for this Good Friday service, you know, I was sitting with my kids and I was saying, I was, I was talking to them, I was asking them, what is Good Friday? So they gave all kinds of answers. So I was began to explain to them, made them read. So I read. I said, okay, read Isaiah fifty three. They read it. They said, okay, can we go play now? I said, hold on. Okay, and then you go. I told them, read, you know, what happened when Jesus got arrested. Made it very, very simple, but helped them to understand what is Good Friday. I'm not against, you know, uh, uh, making them go to children's church, all of that. All of that is good. But what you speak, 
over your family, over your children is, is way more beatier than what they learn. They, what they see in your life. You know, this is, I think, one of the first times, and I don't know what, I stayed back home to watch online. Right? And the kids were like, we're not going to church. I said, no, we'd watch online this time. <laughs> right? And for them, it was very different. For me, it was very different. But then it gave me a wonderful opportunity to really explain to them what is Good Friday? What happened on this day? And I remember I was, I was talking to Ethan and uh, my eldest son, and I was saying, really, Jesus did this? How can he do this? How, 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 how did he plan this out? It was amazing to, you know, when you invest time in your children and they have the questions that we never think of right, at that age. So <clears throat> it was very important. Uh, we talked about work-life balance. OK, let's get into chapter 20. Uh, we should be able to finish our portions this in this class, right? Uh, this class and the next. So, chapter twenty: saving, investing, retirement, and beyond. Let me just uh, present the notes now. There will come a time when we will all have to retire. And now, sometimes when we hear the word retire, you feel it's nice. Now, my parents are retired, and I keep looking at them and say, "Wow." This is the life you should have, you know. They wake up, they just relax the whole day. <laughs> they have their breakfast at 11 a.m. Uh, it's just relaxed life. But every time I say that, you know, my mom says 40 years. Oh man, 40 years of going and teaching in a school. <laughs> 40 years. So as as youngsters. It's very important for us to think ahead. Of course, we think about our work. We think about what we want to do. But we must also think about ahead. What will I do after I retire? Psalms 91 says, with long life, I will satisfy you. So if you want to live a long life, no company is going to keep you till 65, 70. They'll say, OK, back up. So you got to prepare for the future, right? So save and prepare for the future. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. You, you lazy fool, look at the ant. Watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest, it stockpiles provisions. So look at the example of Joseph. Joseph was a man of God. God placed him there. And through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he was able to use wisdom the seven years of plentiful and seven years of famine. So he had foresight. He said, here's what we'll do. We will save up during the time of bountiful. We'll store it up in barns. Right? And then the next seven years, when there's dryness and famine in the land, we'll, we'll, take, we'll tap into what we have saved. Now, can you picture, you know, sometimes when you think of famine, we always think of, Food, but it also could be water. Imagine saving up water for so many years, right? Imagine saving up grain and all these things. Seven years he saved up, but God gave him the wisdom to do it. So it was not a surprise. Hey, after seven years, what do we do? It was a perfect example of the ant. The ant knows, you know, if you look around us, this is summer right now. You will find a lot of ants. Everywhere you will find them. Why? Because they know July is going to come. And once it rains, there's not much that they can do. Right? So they all be working now. And you'll see them in lines everywhere. Right? What are they doing? They're saving up for the harvest. They're saving up for a time when they know that it's going to rain and they cannot do any work. So the same way, you and I, God has given us the wisdom, and, and we are young, right? It's wonderful, but there will come a time we'll have to retire. Think about that. Think about the future. Right? Invest to multiply what you have. Luke 19, 23. Well then, why didn't you put your money in the bank? Then I would have received it back with interest. 
when I returned. Now, in Luke 19, Jesus is teaching the parable about the kingdom of God. Right? So he uses the story of the rich man who, who handed some of his servants money and he said, do what you want with it, do business until I come. So they, some of them used it, multiplied the money. Some of them didn't do it, right? One of them didn't do it. Now, when God gives us, the, the whole principle of this parable is that when God gives us resources, we must learn to use it in the right way. Invest to multiply. Right. So I remember, OK, I'm just giving my examples. Right. You don't have to do this. <clears throat> I remember in my mind, OK, after I knew that, OK, if I've joined full time ministry, I don't want to be dependent on anyone. Right? So I said, OK, here's what I'll do. I will build a house. I will work. I'll try to pay off as much as I can. And then I'll join full time ministry. So that no matter what happens, I have a house to stay in. Other things we can just work it out. So I decided that in my mind. At a very young age, I, I told I went, I told my parents, I want to build a house. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull out some of the finances, pull out loan, and construct. They said, No, you can't do this. You're too young. We'll do it. You know, we'll plan a little ahead. Don't, don't, don't do it now. I said, no, you do that now so that in my mind, I need to quit and join Bible college and join ministry. They said, they were little, my parents were a little apprehensive, but then I said, let's do this. And so uh, I needed their help because of other things, paperwork and all of that. And we got it done. We finished construction, paid off most of the loan, gave it out for, you know, uh, for rent. And I was able to, you know, join leave and join the bible college now it was not easy so i had to slog i didn't really work hard uh, there were times i was working 16 17 hours in a day just to make sure that you know i can pay off this quickly right uh, i'm talking about when i was working in the corporate sector so it was not easy i gave up so much i wouldn't go for uh, you know everyone were buying cars at that time and i remember i used to uh, I used to walk to office, or I, 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 there, was, there were times when I used to take a bus, a regular bus. And my friends, would, you know, people would see me and say, why are you coming by bus? Can't you just buy a bike? I said, okay. <laughs> but they didn't know what, is, what I am planning for. Right? So people are very easily, you know, they'll look at you, look at the car that you drive, look at the bike, look at your clothes, and say, hey, this is what you are. Hey, you don't think about that. You look at what you are going to do for, you know, for your life and how it's going to impact you for the kingdom of God, right? So, so for me, it was, I, you know, some of them would say, you know, your youth is meant to enjoy. That's true, right? Um, it is meant to enjoy. So I'm not saying I didn't enjoy, but I, I would say I sacrificed a lot so that now, right, now I can enjoy I can. I can say that right? because uh, enjoy in the sense I can just freely do ministry. I'm not worried about, oh man, what am I going to do next? Where is this, you know, two children? What do I do? I'm not worried about it at all. I know God is my provider and I know that there are things that are already set in place. So no matter what, there's a shelter that we have. Right? So it's, it's just planning ahead. Right? So, for example, there are people who, who do different differently, right? So we, I'm not judging them. I'm not saying, hey, you did this. My own brother, he decided to get married late, right? He decided, my elder brother, he decided to get married late. And now he's looking to buy a house and all of these things. That's his wish, right? But he knows he's going to just work. But for me, it was different, right? So you see what God is putting in your heart and be responsible. It will call for sacrifice. It will call for commitment. It will call for hard work, right? <clears throat> but you'll see the fruit later. Plan financially to live responsibly. We need to plan financially how to take care of your children, for your family members. If they are in need, um, 
or if you have parents who are old at old age you have the responsibility to look after them don't say i will look after them later on you have the responsibility if that also means do ministry and work do it no but god has called me for ministry do that also no but god has called me for uh, only to preach and teach do that and work because your family is important right plan in the right way our dependence is always on the lord this is wonderful right remember this uh, our hearts oh let's go a little up we must ensure we must not make acquiring wealth our primary goal in life wealth is not our primary goal our hearts must always be set on the things of god that's why i love matthew 6:33 seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the other things will be added to you right our hearts must be set on god god i'm doing this because i love you i honor you and i want to glorify your name and then you say god these are the things that i need these are the plans that i have i'm setting it before you our hearts must always be set on the things of god now god is not a god who says okay only pray 24 hours in the holy spirit only then i will bless you no god knows he says right he says look at the birds of the air they don't store up in barns but your heavenly father provides for them so he knows you need a place to stay he knows your needs he knows what when you need it why you need it how you need it he knows it right and when we work hard and we trust god he'll open the right doors for us and he will give us what we need at the right time right we must ensure that we do not worry or be anxious about the future especially in a time that we are living in sometimes we can get very anxious about the future and with all the things that are happening right uh here not only in india but in different countries where especially in the west you know there's so much that's happening all of these pronouns and uh, transgenders and lgbtq and all these things happening sometimes we wonder what about our children it's so important to teach them and it's very easy for us to become anxious what what, what do we do or what about ministry you know we saw covid what if something new comes up and then that's worse than this and then this is going what will happen to my future what will happen to my ministry sometimes we can have be too anxious and fear comes in so it's it's important that we remove that fear perfect love casts out all fear cast it out and say god my time and my life is in your hands and you know what's best right next one parents should provide for their children so i already said this second corinthians 12 14 this is now the third time that i'm ready to come visit you and i will make i will not make any demands on you it is you i want not your money after all children should not have to provide for their parents but parents should provide for their children now part of the god given responsibility is that parents must look after children that is a mandatory line that we must understand and resolve it in our hearts we must provide for our family we must so for example you get just an example you get a certain amount of money and there's a big need in the church right but you also know that you have a wife or you have a family at home that you need to look after now the wise thing to do see we know that you know god has told us when you give i will open up the doors and i will i will send my blessings upon you and all of that we we trust all of that but god has also given us the responsibility to think use our wisdom and walk in in this life in 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 this life right so we must ensure that okay i'll keep a portion of it for my children first i give to god 
I keep a portion for my family. And so I'm not dishonoring God in any way. Right? When God told Adam and Eve, you, you tend the garden, you look after it. And eventually, I'm sure God would have walked around and said, okay, you do it this way. You know, the, the potatoes look not so good. Make it this way. Or the, the, the herbs that you're growing here, you, you water it this way. Because the Bible says that God taught them what to do. Right? So parents should provide. Children should care for their widows and elderly family members. That's what First Timothy 5, 4 and 8. Let's read that. Anyone can read? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 4 and 8. But if you if a widow has a children or grandchildren, they should learn first to carry out their religious duties towards their own families, and in this way repay their parents and grandparents. But that is what pleases God. Verse 8. But if any do not take care of their relatives, especially the members of their own family, they have denied the faith and are worse than any unbelievers. Some harsh words, no? If you do not take care of your family, you're worse than an unbeliever. They have denied the faith. They're saying, hey, but God, I'm, I'm preaching. I'm going to many countries and, um, or many cities, and I'm preaching. I'm spending all my money and all my time, my energy, my resources, catching a train, going there, preaching and doing this and all of that. But if you have children and family at home who are starving and not looked after, then it says that they have denied the faith and become worse than a unbeliever. Sometimes, you know, people, especially I've noticed this in ministry, people measure our anointing or our success by what we can do. If somebody is healed, oh, I'm the, you know, oh, he's a great man of God. Or if somebody is delivered from, uh, who's pos possessed by demons has been delivered, he's a great man or woman of God. Or he leads the worship, oh, when he leads the worship, angels directly come and sit with us. Oh, he's a great worshiper. Sometimes we measure people by their anointing. Now remember this, God works in spite of us. Right? He doesn't work because of us. Because you did this, I will work. That's not how God is. God will work in spite of us. God can use a donkey to bring healing to somebody else. God can use a person who is a believer for three, four hours to raise up a dead person. Because God works in spite of us. So never measure people by... He did this, he did this, like these are the 10 things he's done. No. It's good they've done it. It's good that they have, you know, the anointing. Praise God for that. But remember that by nature we are, we are sinful and we there are times when we will disobey God, but God will still work. So even when we don't look after our parents and grandparents, that's the point I'm coming to. We don't look after our family and we say, hey, I've done ministry, the blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the mute are speaking, the paralyzed are walking. God, you're doing all of this. God will say, hey, I've given you a responsibility. Look after your family. This I'm doing because that's what I do. It's not because of you. Right? It's not because you are going everywhere. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, this is what He does. That's done. But you have a responsibility to look after parents and your children. Next, you don't want their, your family members to come and give testimony about you in the church. You understand where, what I'm trying to say, right? God works in spite of us. So never measure what you must do through your ministry. Or because I'm doing this, then the other things God will look after it. No. You have to look after it. You have to look after your parents. You have to look after your children. It's a responsibility, right? Everyone with me? Yes. Okay. Let's go down. 
Okay, retire, refire, add meaning to those golden years. Psalms 92, 12 through 15. Go ahead. The righteous will flourish like palm trees. They will grow like the cedars of Lebanon. They are like trees planted in the house of the Lord that flourish in the temple of our God. That is still be a fruit in old age, <clears throat> and they and are always green and strong. This shows that the Lord is just that there is no wrong in my protector. Yeah. So when old age comes, never look at old age as okay, time to sit and do nothing. Retire. That's a natural thing, yes, but you can also refire. Meaning that is your time when you can spend more time in God's presence, spend more of your resources in the things of God, right? Spending more, uh, maybe time in the scripture, learning an instrument. You can do so much. Now we've gotten to this mindset, okay, retirement means wait for death. No, <laughs> it's, it doesn't, it's not like that, right? Uh, add meaning to those years. Add meaning, right? Uh, add structure also to those years. Uh, so, look at look at people in the scriptures. Look at Moses. At his old age, he could see. He had perfect eyesight. 120. You know. Firstly, I've decided to myself, I'm not going to retire. There's no retirement in ministry. Now, I'm going to do this as long as I can stand and as long as I breathe, I will do it. I know that I'm going to do this. All right. So. So you can still add meaning to your life. Right? Add, add things that, you know, so there are some things that I've already thought of what I want to do. Right? I may not have put it in paper yet, but some of the things I want to do right? in terms of learning, in terms of, uh, uh, okay, I'll just tell you this. I wanted to learn the violin. Violin, right? I always wanted to learn the violin. So I was thinking, okay. And I retire. <laughs> I'm going to learn the violin. No, I wish I could do that. It's just that I don't have time to go for classes. and right? no. So I know that, OK, when there'll come a time, I want to learn it. And I spend uh, when there's more time in my hands, I want to learn. So you add uh, meaning to those golden years. right? God who was, who is, and always be, will be with you. Malachi 3.6, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Uh, he's always the same. I will carry you. Isaiah 46, 4. Even to your old age, I am he. And even to your gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. So it's always good to reflect back on the goodness of God. The God who led us all these years. He saw us through those professional journeys, the biggest part of our lives. And he will continue to remain faithful to us. Right? Uh, so don't look at saving and investing as a sin. Don't look at it. Sometimes people look at it, oh, this guy, this person is saving because he's thinking that he's not putting his trust in God. No. What does the Bible say? Look at the ant. You know, sometimes you, you know, people take the book of James, the letter of James, and says, when you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow, why are you doing all of this? You're just a vapor in the air. So live just as the way you are and trust God in everything. But God is also saying, that's where context comes in. Just look at the ant. They prepare. Look at Jesus. He prepared. He prepared before. I'm sure Jesus didn't say, I'm sure Jesus didn't say, okay, team, 12 of us, we are going to, uh, we're going to go Samaria, Judea, go up all the way, uh, and then come back to Jerusalem. So let's go. Do you think he would have said that? You would have said, okay, carry your tunics, carry some food for all of us, carry your waters, water bottles, uh, prepare yourself for the weather. We're going to be walking a lot, right? So you, I'm sure he would have said that. It's not like they randomly, he wouldn't have said, okay, anyways, I took five loaves of bread and two fish and I fed thousands. I'll take one bread and feed all of you 12. He wouldn't have done that. He would have said, take what we need. 
He would have prepared for his journey. And being the son of God, he would have prepared so much so we must prepare. Right? So, if, the, if, if when there comes a time, you're all are students right now, but once you start working, plan your finances. Maybe talk to people who are matured and who are probably, you know, who, who know more in this. Ask them, what is good? What, which is the best place? Remember, even if it's the smallest amount, don't despise it. It can be a 500 rupees in Indian money. It can be a small amount. But when you, when you put it aside and you say, God, I'm doing what you have told me to do. I'm keeping this for my future. God will honor that. Now the enemy will come and say, what will this do for your future? One visit to the supermarket, it's over. You don't listen to the enemy. God is the one who blesses. So you start small. Next thing you know, 10 years down the line, that'll be something which you really needed. Right? So learn to start investing and preparing for the future. OK. Uh, let's get into our last portion, uh, section four. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship. We talked about this. right? Uh, uh, briefly, we talked about the exciting journey of starting your own business, starting your own ministry. Uh, I'm just going to relate it to ministry and business, right? Uh, it's it's a it's a journey of faith. It's a step of faith, and it could this step could cause a lot of anxiety, fear, or excitement. It could be mixed emotions, right? Uh, and so I, I remember, you know, when we were in Mangalore, this, uh, we planned to start this new church location in a place called Derala Kate, which is about 20, 20 odd kilometers away from the city. And I think most of you students went there. Uh, and so I, so for, before we started, well, I, we, I used to go there, reach out to students. There were, we had about 20, 25 odd students who would come all the way from Derala Kate, but they were not regular. So I remember asking them what happened. So they, you know, th there was a lot of practical challenges, so they couldn't come every Sunday. So we started like an evening prayer over there. And somewhere we felt, OK, now's the time we can, we can pray to start about launching a, a service, a church location here. So we began just by you know, worship and you know, reading the word, ministering there. And, it, now, and eventually, we, we prayed, we took about six, seven months, and then we said, okay, we will, you know, we, I spoke to pastor, I shared with them, these are the challenges, that's why they're not able to come. Do you think we can start something there so that it's closer for them, practical? See, they're all students, they, can't, they don't have bikes and cars to come all the way, but they walkable distance, they'll come. And they're all Christians, they're all believers, and there's no church there. So everything made sense. There's no church, they're believers, they are youth, they're Christians, and they need a church. But the challenges were transport on Sunday morning. They work. They they have you know uh, college even on Saturday. So Sunday morning uh, for them is a challenge. So they said if it's Sunday evening, nothing like it. We will wake up. We'll do what we have to do, and we will all come on Sunday evening. Right? Uh, but then you know we prayed and we felt and we started. But I remember that feeling on that first Sunday. You know we. We took the hall and uh, you know we prayed over it. We had to do a little bit of work inside the hall, uh, you know, construct a small restroom. We did all of it, and it was a, I think it was a Friday or a Saturday, and I knew that the coming Sunday we already announced Sunday evening we're going to have the launch of the church service. Uh, but I remember going back home and there was this feeling of, oh man, starting a new place, um, and. You know, uh, there was this feeling of uh, joy, happiness, but also anxiety and uh, no fear, but just this uh, feeling of uneasiness. You know? Not uneasiness, but uh, I'm waiting for tomorrow to start. I'm waiting for tomorrow. I just wanted to be there at the launch and just. And so I made sure my guitar is all right, made sure all the equipment is set up correctly. Um, and it's a great feeling. Right? And I remember that Sunday, the first Sunday, uh, we had about, I think about 
27 odd students, if I'm not wrong, 26 to 27 students, okay, apart from those who came from the main church. Uh, it was a wonderful time, right? And uh, it's exciting. And I just felt that this church can really grow fast because right opposite that church was this huge medical college with over, I would say, about 5,000 to 6,000 students studying there. A little further on, maybe just uh, a kilometer away, there was another college. So you, we could see like thousands of students there. I just felt we could make such an impact on these young people's lives. Right? And I thank God for what's happening now as well, right? The church is just doing so well. and uh, So do a thorough preparation before you launch. You must be clear of the idea, the business model, the business plan. So if it's ministry, plan out. Think about what, how you're going to launch it. Why you want to do it? You know, one of the things that we did was we sat down and we said, we said advantages, so pros and cons. Pros, if we start a church here, what are the pros? These are the pros. What are the disadvantages? Students. The disadvantages, students, you never know. They'll say, I'll come, but next thing you know, they may not come. Or they'll say, I'm go they finish their course, they go back home. What about the next academic year? Because we know that there are students, but you, you know that this batch will go. They're not going to be there. Maybe one or two will be there who get a job and they'll stay back. So we put it all together. What are the other cons? Okay. So, you know, if uh, the, the place should be this way or whatever, we put it all down on paper. And we also thought, okay, what if we hire a van that can go pick them up? Because transport was a problem. So I put everything down on paper. If the van goes, picks them up and comes back, this is what they will charge. But if the van goes and only five people come in that 20 seater van, it's a waste of money. We can't tell them, hey, we sent a van, why didn't all of you all come? We can't say that. They have many other things to, you know, to say. So, so do a thorough preparation. Put down the pros and the cons. Don't think about the cons and say, oh, just because I want to start, I'll put all the, okay, these are negatives. I cancel it in Jesus' name. No. It is fact. It's there. Those are negatives. You don't cancel it. You think about it. And plan well. And be diligent about the work that you're going to do. Determine to do business God's way. Apply biblical principles to develop your business. And so, again, when you talk about business, do it God's way. We talked about this, right? Workplace principles, godly, uh, you know, godly principles to use in the workplace. Um, and this is 100% applied even in ministry. Make sure you depend on the Holy Spirit. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Don't be ashamed of small things. Uh, don't be ashamed of small beginnings, right? Remember APC started with how many people? 12 people. So sometimes we say, look at the Easter production and say, wow, when will my church recover? <laughs> it's taken us many, 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 many years to get here, right? So there were small beginnings. Right? And uh, as I said, even our worship, our performing arts team, just small beginnings. I remember performing arts, we used to go, three or four of us, uh, you know, we would go sing the song there and then the performing arts would go to these, we would go to colleges and the three of them would do a dance. That's the performing arts team. I, we didn't have like a big 50, 100 people, team members, you know, so just a few youth got together. Okay, we'll do this. Right? And then eventually we started to grow. So don't despise small beginnings. Uh, the Lord will help you to lay a good foundation and then you can build on that. Right. But something that we must always do is look at what you want to see. Right? When Jesus saw the tomb, he, what, he didn't see the tomb. He saw Lazarus walking out. When he saw the blind, he didn't see the blind. He saw them healed already. But you see what you want to see. So if you have, you know, many of you are going back to pastor churches, right? Your parents, your parents are pastors. They go back. You see what you want to see, 
If you want to see 500 people in your church, look at it in your mind's eye. Right? And work towards it. But don't despise. Don't look at the 50 sitting there. When will this become 1,000? Oh, it's okay. Take your time. But look at it. Have that folk that in your mind's eye, okay, one day this will happen. Right? Uh, and very important is to do the ministry God's way. Being led by the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to guide you. Don't be distracted by quick success. You are in for a long haul. Proverbs 20, 21. The more easily you get your wealth, the less good it will do you. If you experience quick success, that is good, but don't let it distract you. If you look at the scriptures, tell me, you know, where in the Bible has somebody got quick success? Very few. Everywhere God has made them, God pe made people to wait. I would say Solomon. David said, okay, come Solomon, you're the next king. That's because of hierarchy. Okay. It was inheritance. It was just given. And Solomon did one thing good. He said, give me wisdom, Lord. And through that wisdom, he made wealth. Right? But he didn't stay focused. He married these concubines. He built temples that were against God. And he lost the vision that you know, his father gave him. So that's the problem with, with gaining wealth quickly. David gained wealth, probably became the king after, what, 17 odd years? And he knew the value of it. Solomon didn't know the value of it. Solomon didn't have to go fight in the hot sun, defeat enemies. He didn't have to do all that. Said, okay, Solomon, what do you want? Wisdom. Okay. He got wealth. He used that wealth the wrong way. And we know the story. So, but then there will be times God will bless you immediately. Stay focused. Right? Stay focused on what God is doing. Especially when it's business. You know, sometimes people will come and say, I will give you so much. Finances. For the next five years, this is what I will give you. It's very easy to lose. Oh, so much money is coming in, so we may lose focus. No, stay focused on the call of God. Don't, don't, don't uh, let money take control over you. Remember, you control the money. Right? You know how to. You make the money doesn't speak to you. You speak to the money. Right? Money is just a tool which God gives us to fulfill ministry. If God wants to do something, He will do it. He will send anybody to do what you have to do. If he wants to fulfill it, he will fulfill it. Right? Don't be hasty for profit. Uh, first plant your fields, then build your barn. If you build your barn without planting the feeds, it's fields, it's going to be empty for a long time. Stay focused on what is important, even if it is hard work. So sow your seeds. Work the crops, then build your barns. And then you know, okay, once these crops grow, it's harvest time. I'll take all these crops, take the harvest, and put it into the barns. Right? What is it? What, 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 is, what are we trying to achieve here? We're trying to think, okay, my focus is not only on, the, on, the, on what I'm going to fill up in the barns, but my focus is also hard work. The fruit of my labor will be a full barn. Right? Keep a close eye on what brings in the bread and butter. Uh, Proverbs 27, 23 to 27. Can any one of us please read? Look after your sheep and get as carefully as you can. Because wealth is not permanent and not even nation lasts forever. You cut the hay and then cut the grass on the hillsides while the next crop of hay is growing. You can make cloths from the wool of your sheep and buy land with the money you get from selling some of your gods. The rest of the gods will provide milk for you and your family. 
and for your servant woman as well yeah verse 23 says look after your sheep and cattle as carefully as you can the point a point is the sheep and the cattle are the are the core of the business for a, a farmer or a shepherd that's the core they need the sheep right as as your ministry or your business takes shape there will be many opportunities coming your way in ministry as well suddenly you'll have many invitations people are calling you from everywhere don't get distracted first build on what you are doing don't chase after every opportunity right there will come a time then okay this is settled then you can go out and do other things keep a close eye on what is important that's your core right if it's business okay this business is my core so i will focus there and then there'll come a time opportunities will come you can think of other things if it's ministry uh, or, or a church local church that's your core you build that and then eventually you can start going outside ministering outside right okay stay clear of pride that comes with success proverbs 16:18 pride goes before destruction the holy spirit comes before a fall so i just want to share a few thoughts here but we'll take a break we'll come back and then we'll continue from here